Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. I've adjusted things a little bit, so like the nav ball is up to the left. I basically wanted more screen space. This is a MiG-23. I don't remember who made it right now, but uh, it's supposed to be a real-life uh, replica. Let me go ahead and hit 2 and you can see the wings do fold back, which is pretty cool and does actually have an effect on its uh, flight capability. I'm going to see if I can get those back forward, though, because I am intending to take this thing in for a landing, which is why the throttle is so low as well. And uh, here's the thing. This is going to be very difficult to land because it has a really good realistic system of landing gear. However, as you might have noticed by the error message in the top left corner, uh, the front landing gear actually do not deploy because they go inside of a section that is considered stowed, and then the game doesn't let you... Um, send them out again. You might have heard my phone just tell me something. Uh, don't worry about that. That's, that's my mistake. I apologize for that. I'm also gonna hit the brakes real quick to see... Because it seems the air brakes here on the back, I believe these are air brakes. Uh, oh. They are not. Or at least they're not according to this. I, I don't know what happened there. Oh, you know what? It may be part of, like, whatever this is that seems definitely out of place something may be loose inside back there, um, as this craft did have an issue where uh, you might have noticed that some of the how the landing gear is designed on one side is damaged. I'm surprised it's... yeah, it's only on one side. Yeah, the landing gear basically collapsed when I went to go take off with this thing, so this is going to be very hard to land. Um, it would be hard to land just by default, but the fact that uh, the the landing gear the landing gear will not correctly maintain their position correctly they they're gonna they're gonna fold in as soon as we touch the ground and the front landing gear is not able to be deployed again um, this thing is going to break on landing which is why I'm trying to land at a very very gentle very, very gentle. And hold the nose up as long as I can because no front landing gear means the nose is going to come down. Oh, look at that. The particle, like everything just... Okay, okay. We're still, we're still in here. Whatever the Kerbal is actually in. Okay, it's, it's a, uh, it's a Mark 1 cockpit that was embedded in there. Yeah. Now, all things considered, that was a that was a very good landing, consider because he survived. But uh, yeah, the forward landing gear they might actually still be forward landing gear. Yeah, I believe it's. I don't think it's that one. I think it's no, that's the cockpit, huh? I'm pretty sure it's either this one. I mean, that one. It won't let me deploy it. It it very well. Yeah, it looks like it's that one that was supposed to be the forward landing gear. And, uh, that's funny, the, uh, arrow shell here has, uh, dislodged from its former position in the nose. Uh, that's, uh, what happens when you crash and part physics don't know what to do with you. I also forgot there was a parachute I could activate somewhere on board. Ah, it's right there, hidden in the tail. Looks like it was a drogue chute, I believe. And that could have helped, but, uh, did not. Basically, right now, I'm going through and looking at uh, stock recreations of craft. Oh yes, it also came with missiles, but I had fired those already. And uh, this one, just the landing gear design, struck me as like, holy crap, that's actually automated to do like a proper landing gear sequence. I want to see that in action. And so I had to try it. It didn't go great, but it was still great fun to try. Now that's the only one of these I've actually flown so far. This was actually uh, from a hangar that contained all of these on space, uh, what was it called? Uh, Kerbal X? Yeah, on Kerbal X. And uh, so that's the only one I've actually flown. The rest of these I've, you know, been looking at and then not actually flying yet. I do have to say, the Mirage 2000 is a plane I love very much. And the fact that we have a Mirage here, which Oh my god, it has three engines hidden in there, and an afterburner? Actually, an extra engine as an afterburner? What is... it's got... it's got a Panther, a Weasley, and... Alright, let's see, that's the Weasley. That is a Panther, but it looks like 
it's clipped into the one that's there. So there's two Panthers, and yep, sure enough, there's another Panther. And then this is the Turbo Jet, the or the Whiplash, and uh, it's probably got some action groups in here to do something. No. Oh, there we go. Uh, switching mode on the two Panthers and turning the Whiplash off. Well, turning it on and off. And then that's all, really. There's no turning off the the whiplash. Is there? Hold on. Oh. Oh, it's turning it's turning on or off the whiplash. I'm really not sure. Um there's two decouplers set up in here. Oh, yes, those are for the uh of course, those are for the drop tanks, I would assume. Oh, can I can you stop highlighting that so I can see these? Yep, it sure enough is. Let's go ahead and launch this one. Oh yes, those uh, random explosions that you may have heard. Uh, that's uh, debris from something else that was just kind of sitting there. Also, uh, for some reason, the uh, landing gear bouncy right here, so we're just going to kind of pretend that's not happening and get going. Looks like the Panthers are not set in an afterburning mode, so I'm guessing the afterburner will engage both the or rather, the action group 8 is supposed to be the quote-unquote afterburner mode, which will toggle the turbo, although, come to think of it, might not be intended to be used the way I was thinking. Oh, come on, let's... okay. Whoa! We are getting a little too far to the left of the runway, which is why I started pulling up, but, uh, or started... I tried to turn slightly, but... Yeah, I think the rear landing gear are a bit too far back. Um, let's see, are we correctly... We are not using the fuel in these. Oh wait, that's a uh, structural fuselage. Where's the? Where's something with fuel in it? There we go. Yeah, we're we're not actually using fuel from the drop tanks. I assume they were drop tanks. Maybe they're just supposed to be bombs. But uh, ooh, the stability isn't actually great on this right now, which is slightly annoying. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and activate that as well. That should give us a nice speed boost. I'm going to go ahead and drop those, since we weren't really using them anyhow, and go ahead and activate the afterburners, which actually is causing us to go quite a bit slower. Let's see. No, it is faster, it's just we are pulling up and it was enough of a difference to make it not work very well. That's interesting, I, although I bet we're actually using more fuel in the lower atmosphere right now with this on than we would be with the afterburners on. Let's check. Oh no! Okay, the afterburners are still more wasteful than the whiplash. I'm just used to the whiplash is quite a low power, quite a, not low power, sorry, excuse me, it's quite high power. Oh, yes! The little strut there for the fuel adapter is visible from the cockpit and looks good from the cockpit. I like that. Good. Very good. The... what I was trying to say, if I can remember my sentences, is... Uh, oh yes, of course, because the way the cockpits are aligned in here, of course it would show. And technically you can put three Kerbals in here. Um, the Whiplash is a very fuel-heavy craft. Let's see, do we have any air brakes? Doesn't look like it, at least not with the braking action group we don't. Now, this thing's going to probably lose speed quite fast. I'm definitely not lined up for the runway at all, but I'm honestly not too bothered about that. Now, this thing did have quite a high takeoff speed, so I'm a little uncertain about its ability to land at lower speeds, which is why I'm bringing it down quite a bit quicker than I did the other design, though I'm still going to try and touchdown relatively, whoa, relatively gently. Um, I'm actually not cutting off the engine this time, though. Actually, I think I will. I'll go ahead and, or at least, you know, set it to idle. 0% throttle. Alright, bring it down. Gently. Brakes on. Disengage SAS. And there we go. And it goes to its little dancing bounce. Actually, it stopped already. Cool. No, wait. There, it's, it's going just ever so slightly. Yeah, Mirage 2000 in. It's pretty freaking awesome.